Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studio here in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk some professionalized wrestling on Wrestling Mayhem Show. 546 Tuesdays we've been doing this with me. Coming at us from Pooh, Kipsy, New York. He's the only Mayhemmer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is mad. Mike? Sorg, I'm waiting for my drone sandwich to come in. <laughs> it's on the way. Find out more about that on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold on Patreon, guys. We'll, we'll tell you more about that in a moment. Also, back with us, he is leading the way. He's a sound guy from the Reggae Wrestling Alliance. He is Wheels. Hey, what's up, Sword? Man, it feels like I just got done talking to everybody a few days ago. Wait, mm. I did. Yes, huh. you were in I the... I might have been screaming a little bit, but everybody should understand. Yeah, there I was sound, and I had to make sure Sword sounded good, I sounded good. Even the wrestlers sounded good. Yeah, we had a little bit of an experiment the other day. We, we tried doing a live Wrestling Mayhem show as sort of a pre-show to RWA show uh, uh, this past Saturday. Uh, it's in your feed, uh, so feel free to check that out and uh, let us know what you think. Should we do more? There's definitely things I do want to change about how we do those if we do them again. Uh, so maybe we'll try again in February if we'd like to in RWA if they'll have us back. Uh, so so let us know what you think about that. We'll, we'll work on that. Maybe we'll go to different promotions. You, you never know. So, and our special guest co-host for this week, he appears on Chair Shot Reality and also at PWX and McKeesport, PA, as well as other places that, yeah. Uh, a lot, a lot of places, <laughs> my lots, man. Lots, lots of places. The Rev is in the building, man. He the is. Rev has spoken. He is the Rev, Ron Hunt. We, you, you just joined me a few weeks ago on Indie Mayhem Show and are fast-tracking him to the main show. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've been promoted. I graduated, Mom. I did it. That's that's it. That's it. it, it, it the interview is not just an interview for a podcast interview's sake. It's to see it's if boot camp. it's yeah, it's the boot camp to see if we think we can swing it on the main show with us talking about pro wrestling. So you made it. Congratulations. I think I passed. I, I think I passed. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, but, but now the real game begins. <laughs> Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Welcome to the game of mayhem. Uh, I was trying to channel Riddler from Batman Forever. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Your 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 uh, suit, your track suit, is not light up enough. Is the problem? Um, that is because it is winter. <laughs> okay. All right. You need yeah. a thermal. Okay, I guess. Thermal. Yeah, no, no. Guess a accurate. Green, a green track suit is more of a spring sork. Upstate New York. I know how cold it gets up there. I, I get mm-hmm. it. I yeah. get it, man. No, that's why that's why I'm rocking the Stanley Cup champion shirt. Mm, look but at that. But it's also wrestling related, so you know. I think you might be an undercover Yenzer. Oh yeah, uh, yes. Oh my oh, god, yeah, yes. Zorg. That's my second Twitter account. <laughs> Under at undercover Yenzer. Royalties, please. Royalties. There you go. Yes. There you go. Hook it Let up. me see if it's available. But well, this is your <laughs> Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can join us here every Tuesday live dot wrestling dot com. No matter what technology we might be maybe using, and yeah, we've been using the Facebook Live 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 as Lave. of late. Lave. <clears throat> you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please subscribe on Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or the video versions on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can also drop us a line to that email address. Good times! Good times, Good times yeah. at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the hotline at 412-206-WMS0. I, I had this idea this past week where I want to do... Uh, videos of us doing like that. Well, actually, during the pre-show, like we should do like like Mean Gene hotline plugs and just give our hotline number <laughs> for the uh, for the podcast. Yes, yes, this needs to happen. Sorg, yeah. Sorg, that's going to sound like a very bad idea. I think <laughs> Sorg, Sorg, and we can we can start rumors too. We can start rumors. We can start yeah. rumors about people on the show uh, mm-hmm. about some of the Sorg, local indies. Sorg, did you know one member of the Mayhem Show recently had a child that they don't know about? <laughs> Call the hotline to find out. <laughs> it was really, it was really DJ and Lunchbox with some bad tacos. But anyways, um, and also <laughs> a big. Oh, and that's exactly Sorg. You don't give away the scoops. No. 
<laughs> I didn't say it wasn't a food baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a bad mean Gene Okerlund. Uh, and also, you can support the show on patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. And you have to forgive me because I realized I loaded the wrong uh, 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 thing that doesn't have our Patreons for the on screen. So I'm going to have to do it the old school way. But first, a big shame, thanks. Shame. Shame. <laughs> shame. <laughs> Though I'm so sorry, the people that give us money. I swear we did something good for you on gold this week. Uh, but, yes, anyways. We uh, big thanks to, of course, longtime Patreoner Bo Diggity, Woo! as well as the Woo! Matthew. <laughs> Wait, what? That got weird. That got Umaga E over there. <laughs> I thought it was a turkey. I, I think okay. that's more Xena the Warrior Princess. <laughs> Xena the Warrior Things Turkey. Like a combination of both. <laughs> a little bit of everything. It's a, it's open for interpretation. <laughs> it's it's interpretive of Umaga. Not Umaga. Um, Kamala. I'm thinking Kamala. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, wow, that say, got really confusing. Tonight, oh, tonight. that that's the dubstep remix of Kamala's theme song. That's what that is. <laughs> oh. Also, a big thanks to other Patreoners like Christopher Bishop, Bobby Snyder, whoever that is, Ed Burke, and Alex Cars. Thank you so much for contributing to the show, putting your money where our mouths are. Our micro, which is our microphones um, and the internet uh, and, and contributing. You guys get uh, Mayhem Show Gold and, of course, State of the Mayhem, which I swear I'm actually going to do. You know, I should actually probably do one from Thailand. Uh, that could be a lot of fun if I can find internet out there. Uh, Sorg, you need to do it during a Taipei death match. Oh, is, is, are Goodness there Taipei gracious. death matches in Thailand? <laughs> Taipei death match. I, do I have to have a Taipei, Taipei death match with Chess Flexor? Yes, you do now that you mentioned it. <laughs> oh, no. Now oh, that you no. Met, but... We don't like. We don't want it to be too bad. So instead of glass, you have to break up like a bunch of cornflakes. <laughs> That's a good idea. I actually like that idea. And now I kind of want to eat cornflakes. Crunch. That stuff rips your roof or your mouth up. Oh too. no, Sorg! Frosted Lego. flakes. Legos. Oh no. Legos. <laughs> no, they you know did what? that. I, wrap I, your hands in masking tape. Dip them in a pool of Legos and start. Bare knuckle boxing. Didn't feel I w- just think the quality to everything would just be bacon. Ba- okay. Oh no, I would just you just end up eating each other's hands. Uh, uh, Mike, Mike, they did have a Lego involved match with POW's tournament of uh, of Anarchy. Um, uh, last that wasn't year. a different direction, was it? I, I was that another I, match? I think so, but it was called the uh, Playtime Is Over match. <laughs> was Dana Brooke in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Cause she should be. <laughs> drop the mic. Drop it. Just drop it. <laughs> oh man, we barely even started the show. Um. Anyways, uh, let's get into the news. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about Joey Styles uh, opening his mouth this week. Oh my god. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. But at first, let's talk about Survivor Series. It's this weekend. Let's do a preview. The Undertaker just made a cameo, and and I don't know, threatened everybody on SmackDown tonight. So. Uh, maybe because wait, he, what what did he actually do? Because I didn't get to see SmackDown. Yet. He he came out and basically gave a pep talk and let my, let everybody know that he's a uh, uh, WrestleMania no longer defines him. He's here to stay. Um. Then why isn't he on the team? I don't know. I'm hoping it's the last minute swap up. <laughs> well, because he teased that he might be the commissioner. Without really saying it, he said the commissioner okay. needs to be someone that doesn't have a soul. Pretty I much. Thought, okay, so okay, so you caught that too? Because I'm like, did he just like say he wants to be the commissioner? Like, it, I'm, what? Pre- I'm pretty sure because if you seen him uh, cut the camera to Shane McMahon's face, he's just like, okay. I mean, the crowd chants Shane, but Shane's like, eh, yeah, I'm, I might die. <laughs> so, are we gonna get corporate taker? Oh. oh, corporate taker versus corporate cane. Like, can we just put a suit on and call him Mean Mark again? It's just gonna no, 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 no. It's just gonna be the old Undertaker outfit with the tie. <laughs> but it actually fits. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, yeah it's actually like and, 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 and instead, instead of a motorcycle, he has the Simon Dean Segway. <laughs> I mean, he does yes. have trouble getting around. He does have trouble getting around these things. Oh, man. These are so good ideas. Um, <laughs> He's decent today. WWE, I mean, these are all free right ideas. Here. Yeah, these take them. all free please, ideas. Please take I just them. want a free front row seat. That's all. I mean, I've done, you know, I've done what I could. These, yeah. these these are the ideas we're not pitching the Lucha Underground like I, we usually I just, do. I just want credit once 
for naming the hype bros, and then you can have the rest of my ideas for free. The rest, the rest go to Lucha Underground. <laughs> so, yes. Although when we put out an idea, Lucha Underground, and J- Krista Joseph likes it, that makes you yeah, wonder. I, <laughs> that makes you think. I wonder what season four is going to be like. <laughs> 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 so anyways other okay okay back to it Sur- survivor Lucha series lego deathmatch survivor series the best survivor series ever it's gonna be the 30th edition we have all the the survivor series if you if you're like me and was sad at the lack of survivor series matches holy crap this is we we, we got a lot of them and even a tag team one and i i'm ha- i love this I, I i i could do without the state of the mayhem uh no no that's the thing we do the state of the union they did last universe they did last night because i'm sick of the gms bragging to each other yeah Yeah, i did think it was interesting to see them a bit more off the cuff because uh sorg did you watch the whole thing no i couldn't i couldn't get through the last 10 minutes it it got a little interesting toward the end oh i couldn't Um, there was there was a bad spot in the middle that i couldn't get past that daniel bryant (laughs) was daniel bryant was giving mick foley shit uh i I think he dropped a uh a three letter um Mm -hmm. he sure did that uh technically is a rumor that WWE should not be mouthing but he pretty much said you can't get on me for wrestling because what did you do in 2001 yeah, he, he called Foley out and said, hey, you left being the commissioner and you went to TNA and you wrestled. Word for word. <laughs> yep. Wow. And then, and then he said, oh, yeah, and I talked to Claudio earlier, I, I mean Cesaro, and he wants to be on SmackDown. <laughs> wait, did he really call him Claudio? He yes. really said Claudio. <laughs> wait, but then, then, then they cut, uh, I think they cut like 10 minutes early. I think they did too. They, they, they got, I, they I, I think early. someone was in his ear, like "shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut you the know. fuck up, shut the fuck up." <laughs> and somewhere around there, you hear, "Oh damn it, just take him off the air." <laughs> he he fucking said Claudio and TNA. God damn it, Brian! It's your concussion, isn't it? Damn it! <laughs> well, that's what they blame. It's in the goddamn Indies. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, are you booking him on Evolve? God damn it! <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I, I yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was Stephanie. It was Stephanie, Dad. Uh, I had nothing to do with that, Vince. I had nothing to do with that. I don't even know what a Claudio is. Wait, hold on, By the hold way, on. Vince, would you like some Ricola? By the way, I feel like I feel like your impressions are now informed by Camp WWE voices. Technically, oh I think Camp WWE was informed by me. <laughs> yes, yes, because your Vince, your Vince uh, uh, impression is spot on with the one on Camp WWE. Yep. Yeah. He's not telling you he's cutting another check other than this. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying I've been doing my Vince impression longer than Camp WWE has been on the air. I thought so you much so been doing longer than Vince that, himself. Well, no, so <laughs> much so that people from Lucha Underground do an impersonation of my impersonation. <laughs> That's great. That's how you know you're making it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, the most important one, uh, the, the most important wrestling show on the air is acknowledging you. So there you go. Um, but anyways, uh, so, and I don't, we don't, we didn't get a stipulation. There's no stipulation for the Survivor Series matches themselves yet, right? I know there was a rumor one going around, but I don't think they ever confirmed it. Like, I think it, the rumor one was the thing that we kept saying over and over again. I don't think it's an actual did, rumor. Wait, did we make the rumor? Did, did, did we yeah. accidentally make a rumor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that got out there? Cause... Sure. Oh, boy. I mean, there's two things they could do really, really easily, and it wouldn't matter like to anything. It could be either the last match at WrestleMania or the number 30 spot in the Rumble. Okay. Those are really, really easy things to do. Mm-hmm. Those are very easy things to do. So and not- I think the number 30 spot in the Rumble would be cool. Like, the like because it's like, if you have the MLB All-Star Game, the winner of the MLB All-Star Game gets home field advantage in the World Series. Makes sense. Makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah. I didn't realize that. that, 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 that so, yeah, the, the, the All-Star Game is basically their Survivor Series. Yeah, ironically, if the American League didn't win the All-Star Game, the Cubs probably would not have won the World Series. Mm-hmm. Because it ended in national, it ended in the American League, and they the Cubs had their DH. So yeah, wow. But yeah, yeah. Baseball talk, <laughs> and it comes back around. It Where's Matt? Where's Matt Carlin's for uh, for the baseball talk? Uh, but anyways, 
Uh, he's busy trying to find the toys. <laughs> busy? <laughs> Probably. Uh, but anyways, uh, so so no, I, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. And even uh, uh, tonight, I thought we had uh, um, um, some good stuff with the girls coming in. We had Charlotte do the uh, I bought a ticket gimmick to come in. Today. Oh, boy. I haven't oh. seen that one in a little bit oh, of time. Yeah. Huh? Nothing <laughs> suspicious going on there. Just a front row ticket. Well, when you're a flare, you know. When you're a flare, you really shouldn't even need a ticket. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know if that gimmick really holds as much water now because with StubHub, you can always buy front row tickets. Is this confirmed? Brandon in the chat room saying that whatever team wins gets uh, two or three superstars from the other brand. I, that's that's what I heard going around. But that's uh, that's uh, that sounds more like a like a draft type thing. Are we uh, past that? Well, I mean, I don't think that would be a thing because if SmackDown wins the Cruiserweight title, they get all of the Cruiserweights. <laughs> they get all the Cruiserweights <laughs> and apparently an extra hour. So I don't does, know. <laughs> does Neville come along with that? Like, does Neville count? I don't know. He wasn't in the uh, the uh, the uh, 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 Cruiserweight Lucha inspired backstage uh, thing that happened uh, uh, on, on Raw. So I don't think so. so. That's a shame. I think it's like all of our CWC guys. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, that and is Sin, a shame. And Sin Cara. And Sin Cara. And Sin Cara. Sin Cara's in here. For With some a bonus. Reason. Yeah. Uh, so, but I mean, I think, much as why Callisto being a part of the Cruiserweights technically, uh, instead of just being, although it was kind of great when he took out, of all people, uh, Baron Corbin. Um, but uh, uh, no, I, I, I think it makes sense. I, I, I don't, again, I feel like they're going to be have, have a big void of what do they do with the, you know, the, with with the time on Raw without cruiserweights, but I don't know. We'll see. Oh, get ready for a law of Roman Reigns. Yeah, Superman punching that third hour, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, of course, we have Fantasy Warfare. Um, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Sorg. Um. Um. So. So that's that's going to be a thing. I well, uh, Goldberg looked a little bit better this week. Um. And I, I, honestly, I love I love that whole segment. Everything about it. My 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 is my man Lance getting pushed from behind by uh, Brock Lesnar. But uh, other than I that, thought that that was Lance was Annoy, wasn't it? Uh, that, that that got under my skin a little bit. <laughs> well, make sure you take it up with Brock next time he's in town. Oh yeah! <laughs> you, you really want me to die, don't you, Sword? <laughs> I, I, I just want to see you try. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, well, you, well, you know what happened last time. If you want to reflect back to when I had to try when uh, Roman Reigns was going after Triple H, yeah, you take a head butt and you get a couple, uh, get a couple ice packs. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, so, so does that match go over or under six minutes? <laughs> I say under. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at about uh, I'm looking at about a 20 minute. I got, Whoa, yeah. no really? way! I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking for uh, it. Unless they do like a WrestleMania 20 and spend five minutes doing nothing. <laughs> that, that's that's pretty much what's going to happen. Exactly. And then next thing you know, like all like all hell is just going to hit the roof. I feel like Paul's going to be I kind of want the match to start, and then Austin just comes out and stuns both <laughs> and says, fuck this. No one wants to see this again. I win. Appropriate. <laughs> I think that would be appropriate. That would be amazing. Or Undertaker. <laughs> so, so, so what are you saying? Uh, Undertaker, special guest referee, and screws <laughs> Lesnar to set, to set up for uh, Lesnar and Undertaker 2 at WrestleMania? No, I think, I think Undertaker is going to be the timekeeper and the rest of the stuff you said. Can you just, can you just imagine <laughs> Taker, the timekeeper, just like chilling there with a bell? It'd be really great if he was like, ding, ding, <laughs> ding, <laughs> ding. And then, and then there's thunder for some reason. I don't. <laughs> no, and, that, and then you just hear, for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> <laughs> hey. The end is near song from all those pay-per-views pops on. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh or Kid Rock plays. WWE. Here. W- WWE. <laughs> All these ideas are free for you to have. So we know you're out there listening. We just get like a whole phone book of ideas over here. Be like, listen, listen, listen. Here, here. This is, l- listen, this is my ideas. Please, please. Um, hey, it's Fantasy Warfare. Can't we fantasy book for them? Because it seems like that's what they're doing sometimes. Uh, I guess I, I, I it is. I'm interested, I'm interested to see what happens. But what do you, you think is going to happen overall? Jeez, I Suplex don't know. City. 
I feel like I feel like <laughs> yeah. we're, we're I feel like I'm just going to be really sad for Goldberg after this. Like that's the only th- only conclusive thing I have in this. I'm afraid for him. I, yeah. Like I'm a, because we knew Se- to put it in perspective, we knew Seth Rollins versus Sting might not be a technical masterpiece. No. But Seth Rollins actually cared about protecting Sting's well-being. Mm-hmm. Brock Lesnar doesn't have that problem. No, no. <laughs> because he I'm just pretty sure throw Goldberg around like a little rag doll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure as long as he doesn't kill the fucker, um, he's gonna be okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did you get a championship belt? Listen, I'm the rev. I make things appear, man. I make them appear. Now the thing is, I, I, I in, in a way, and I said the same thing on Chair Shot Reality as Will is willing himself away. <laughs> wait, 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 what's happening here? <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. You see, here we go, tag team, tag team. Uh-huh. All, all my belt, all my belts are upstairs and they're made by Mattel. So, <laughs> listen, get on there you go. our level. This is what I got. This is what I got. Oh, this is okay. He's got a I got uh, Tommy Dreamer. I got, Sandman. I got the Kabuki sick. I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh, geez, really? Huh? Really? Is that what we're doing this show? I for those on audio, I'm sorry, but <laughs> everybody has a belt, and I got a kendo stick. If this is, I mean, Sorg. If know, this isn't the visual inter- interpretation of my role on this show, I, I think I think I think you just lost commissioner, man. I don't know. I got a yep, yep. I got a Sakara mask back yeah, but here. See, I'm the only one who can accurately say the champ is here. Oh. oh, actually, he can because last I knew, he still has the tag team championship in a Fed. So, uh, yeah, that that is correct. You actually read my mind on that. This is absolutely off topic, but I, 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 oh, I just dropped it. Okay, um, I, I'm sorry, I, I brought us off topic. But long story short, back to Lesnar and Goldberg. I said this in, and I'll say it again. I am looking at somehow Goldberg to pull this off. Here's what I'm looking at. With bragging rights, and mind you, Brock Lesnar had all the bragging rights of WrestleMania. What bragging rights does Brock Lesnar have to say, I brought an old wrestler out of retirement from 10 years ago, and I beat him? There's absolutely no, I don't, I don't care how big, how strong you are, there's no bragging rights of bringing somebody out of a 10-year retirement and beating them. Right. After you went to UFC and came back with no problem. But you have to remember, Brock Lesnar wasn't the one that wanted this fight. Goldberg was. In a, in a Go- way, Goldberg was the one who brought it up. Goldberg actually, was the one who brought it up I on think, ESPN. I think the coach brought it up. The, the I was going to say the coach, coach kinda, brought it up. The coach kind of... Really so are you saying the coach has it in for Goldberg, Sork? Are we going Jesse the Bayou Ventura conspiracy theory on this? Because I'm okay rumor? with that. Yeah, yeah, see... You can't yeah, but I trust agree. these it's non-title right. guys. No, no. Nope. <laughs> so we're just trying to go back and forth for all of our belts. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just showing off all the belts here on the video here. So, and there's me. There's me. But I just feel bad for Goldberg. Like, this is gonna hurt. Let me, <laughs> let me let me let me ask you. Let me let me guys ask you this. Do you think it's going to be the same? Less or worse than uh, what Lesnar did to Randy Orton. Ooh. Similar. Similar. <laughs> I, I can't see it. Because here's the thing. I can see Goldberg spearing Lesnar and Lesnar just popping up like, the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> that like, is true. I, I took three tombstones from The Undertaker at WrestleMania, motherfucker. <laughs> and kicked out. Yeah, I see it. I see it. All right, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Do you think there will be a jackhammer? Yes. I th- I think yeah. It has to be. At least one. I, I I'm thinking right off the top, it's going to be a jackhammer reversed into an F five. That that's 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 going to be that first power move, and it's going to be a kick out. I I feel like it's going to be a jackhammer on the outside. Hmm. Because that because that, that's what Orton did. Orton hit the RKO on the outside, so, so Lesnar comes down for a little bit, but it's not like 
Lesnar kicked out of it. Is this rule a normal match or a no disqualification? Because that's going to determine a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the match of the match of Orton was regular rules, right? And look how that ended. <laughs> We could see a jackhammer on top of the announce table. That's what I'm. That's what I've done. My main and question, a, but and a count out, and a count out victory for Goldberg. Oh no, there's no way Goldberg's winning this. I'm sorry, there's no way. I I will literally put this championship belt on the line. <laughs> I literally <laughs> will do that. Wait, wait. There's no way Brock Lesnar isn't winning this. Does it still somewhere spin? right now? John Cena is looking up a picture of you putting it on a dummy. And completely giving an attitude adjustment for you just throwing up that title. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Somewhere, somewhere, John Cena has. Say is, Dummy. Yeah. Oh no, no wheels. We are not bringing that in. Sorg doesn't even know that cannon. What is this? A <laughs> is this a total Bellas thing? It's a TNA thing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Don't bother yourself with it. No. Nope. No. Don't even. It's just don't something even I like to do to Mike. It's fun to do. Yeah. Just, just, just look for the Hardy stuff on YouTube. That's it. And if it takes place in the in the Impact Zone, you don't have to watch it. <laughs> it's an interesting true. Thing. Mm-hmm. Um, all, uh, Brandon, true Brandon in the chat room in the Facebook chat. Uh, I think Goldberg will win because he has uh, the one up already. Unless they uh, will have the rubber match at Mania. I know. I think he, I just Brock beats him and we walk away because that was ten years ago. Mm-hmm. So I, that's that's my that's my yeah. impression. Yeah. Goldberg was winded from talking. That's a little bit. It was <laughs> he a little was. Bit. It's, it's not really wind. I mean, it's just <laughs> you got to catch his breath from inhaling so much pyro smoke. That's it. That's it. I was always wondering if, like, eventually we'll hear about Goldberg had some horrible like lung disease because of all that pyro that he inhaled all those years. That's why we haven't heard from Dwayne Gill in a while, Sork. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, because he. <laughs> oh no! That makes me feel sadder. It's okay. Anyways, it's okay. He's in a better place. Uh, well, I mean, wait, wait, better. no, 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 Goldberg wait, wait. Really... Where is he? I don't know. Probably an indie show. Okay. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I bet his. But... I bet his bookings have gone up in the last few. Oh weeks, yeah, I'm sure. So uh, I'm sorry. Wheels, go ahead. Oh, okay. What I was just gonna say is, it was funny when Goldberg was walking out to the ring. All you kept hearing was. <laughs> I'm like, you're not even near the pyro yet. Calm down. Yeah, I heard that too. <laughs> I heard that too. I thought, I thought. I somebody, always thought he just had bad allergies. I, I, I thought somebody was going to make the Trump at the debate style video of all of his his breathing <laughs> during that promo <laughs> and entrance and everything. So, um, so there are some other matches that are not Survivor Series and are not Fantasy Warfare. Uh, we 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 do have Dolph Ziggler and Sami Zayn for uh, apparently brand control of the Intercontinental Title. Uh, let me see. That's uh, that's kind of done a little switcheroo. Hmm. Yep, it's Miz. Oh wait, Miz one. Did that SmackDown w- Live? So that happened tonight. That yes. happened. Tonight. Oh, Miz won the belt back. Miz, nice. Miz won ah. the belt on behalf of Maurice. <laughs> Dolph he Ziggler, rolled, he'll he never him. win. <laughs> he rolled him up for a schoolboy. Maurice, hurry up and push the back of Miz and switch the schoolboy. And there, and there you go. One, two, three. <laughs> yep. On the rim. Honestly, I do not see it coming. First match of – see, that's what happens when you don't watch the first half of SmackDown Live. That's what happens, Sorg. Mm-hmm. You missed it. You missed it. That's what I get, for, yes. that's what I get for catching up with a friend during the first half of SmackDown. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Wow. Who needs friends, you know, Who needs friends I- when you got championships? Well, Sora doesn't have a championship. No, all I got is the Kabuki stick that I just dropped on the floor, apparently. And I, and uh, he dropped his Kabuki. So, uh, what are the odds that they make it a triple threat match on the pre-show? Uh, <laughs> on the pre-show, I love it. No, like, no, no, no. Like they they make it a triple threat match on the pre-show for the for the main show. Like Dolph gets his rematch. To me, I think it'll be it would make more sense if it would have been like two heels. Versus Babyface. Then, in a way, it would have made more sense compared to just having Dolph Ziggler, who's the face, Sami Zayn, who's the face, for its one heel, who's you know, who's clearly Miz. So, um, I'm on. I'm honestly looking for Sami Zayn to win the title, and then mm-hmm. Miz is going to complain and say, "Hey, it wasn't me. 
the, the, the challenge to put it on whatever show. It wasn't me that did that, so it doesn't deserve to be over there. And Miz is going to do this whole complaining, you know. Uh, and he gets switched over to Raw. Then gets switched over to Raw and, and do that whole thing. So, uh, I'll, honestly, I'm, I'm looking for Miz to lose it. Hmm. Same here. So that's be, that is, at least one of the stipulations has to come through to have some kind of effect from this. So, uh, No, they don't. No, or they don't. And well, oh, I mean, I guess. Sword, why? Why does it's WWE? They don't have to promise anything that they say is going to happen. They are. I got, got you. my man Nick Hanna watching. What? I'm keeping an eye on it. See, you're not even doing your job. We got Nick in the live chat. <laughs> Trace coming. Train too. All right. Well, uh, we'll we'll I'm sure to talk about a little bit more Survivor Series here and there. Throughout the rest of the episode, but in the meantime, I uh, want to give a shout out indie wrestling us. Uh, you can check out a lot of stuff, including uh, uh, the, the thing Wheels is involved with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, International Wrestling Cartel uh, coming out this week. Oh, I don't have the poster up yet. Open season will be coming out uh, this week, so look out for that, including friend of the show Marshall the Bull Gambino, um, almost destroying a fan and uh, almost destroying Shane Andrews uh, for in the main event there. Uh, so uh, go check that out and check out what trailer just went up for Rumble and Royal Valley from a little bit ago uh, from the International Wrestling Cartel. Some great stuff, including the final battle between Britt Baker and Ray Lynn. Ray Lynn's getting oh, everywhere, man. man. <laughs> like, everywhere. Uh, but uh, both of them are getting around a good bit. And that sounds really horrible, but I mean in women's wrestling. Both are very I, wonderful. Very Britt Baker... Uh, Get in the ring with you and uh, smack you around a little bit. Yeah, both, I was going to say, we haven't started talking about Joey Styles yet. No, no, we haven't. That's, there's the segue yeah. right there. Uh, both very very nice and very good friends of the show here. Uh, so, uh, But anyways. Uh, you're not coach, fragile. Not fragile. Oh, Mifo, Mifo, you're amazing. Uh, <laughs> I watched this video. <laughs> sorry, and when, you, when you just spelled out fragile, I just like popped so hard. <laughs> Anyways, you'll, you'll find out what, what's going on on RWA on Open Season 2016. Uh, sign up for the newsletter. You can get a, a free IWC um, digital download that features AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, and is Claudio on that one? I don't think he's on that one. Uh, and a lot of other names I have, uh, involved in that. Uh, and, uh, and you get updates about uh, sales and everything. We just dropped 2014 Renegade Wrestling Alliance and International Wrestling Cartel shows to $4.99. So if you want to go clean up that, go catch up on, on that, including at uh, Matt Hardy uh, appeared in both beds. Uh, so go, go look up Aggression uh, Aggression 6 and Winner Takes All 2014. Uh, both have some pretty good matches there. Go check it out. I think it was, was that Matt Hardy in RJ City, I think? Uh, so go go see that. All righty. So, so Joey Styles. I'm a fan of Joey oh, Styles. My I'm a fan of Joey Styles. I was excited that he popped up at Chikara when we went out for King of Trios. Uh, I thought that was a really good fit for that kind of thing. But apparently uh, this past weekend at uh, the Evolved show, uh, he was in the ring and doing a promo and, uh, and, and, and made a reference to, uh, well, if I was uh, to paraphrase here. If I was MILFs. A, if I, what's that? He made a reference to MILFs. Oh, he made a MILFs. Uh, uh, um, some, uh, if, if he was the future leader, he would be grabbing them, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, so that <laughs> immediately, because I think he was he was apparently told not to make political references on the show, and uh, was uh, dismissed, and has been subsequently quote fired um, as from independent pro- pro- uh, wrestling promotions, including uh, Beyond Wrestling and Chikara, and actually Mike Quackenbush, who, who just joined me a couple weeks ago on Awesome Chat to talk about their. Indiegogo video game um, uh, had a pretty long letter about you know why you know why he's not there and, and kind of taking a stand on this kind of thing in pro wrestling as far as the language and, and, and the presentation and everything like that. Uh, respondent is Mickey James, kind of taking Joey Styles' side more so. Uh, Mike, I think you read through the letter as well from Mickey James. Do you, you want to kind of get into what she got into? Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, well, first, Joey Styles issued uh, his own letter saying that um, it was unprofessional of him. He should have gone over the promo that he was going to cut, and he got flustered and just 
made an offhanded joke like he would have in ECW, probably in WWE, you know, maybe not good enough for backlash, but he would have done it anyway. But um, Mickey James came out and defended because, I mean, he's uh, what when Joey Styles said, he said it as a joke. Mm hmm. And, I mean, raise your hand if you haven't made some kind of joke about something that Donald Trump has said over the course of this election. As much as we I try have. not to. As much we as I, so, I like, try so hard not to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, you know, it's... I mean, and Mickey James came out and she said that she wanted to know what the what the female wrestler in question thought of it. Because I don't think we've heard from her. As far as I know, but Mickey James was like, she probably would have laughed because she understands comedic timing and, you know, it, it can be fun. And some people use humor as like a coping mechanism mm -hmm. for, for things like that. Like, Lord knows I've done it. I've done it on this show. <laughs> like He's doing I, it right now. Yeah, basically. Like, uh, I, I've done it at funerals. I mean, just to, just like you said, it's a coping mechanism. I, you do something to make you feel a little, I, I, a little bit better that you break down and go crazy. I did it when they both picked Chris Benoit in the uh, in No Mercy tournament a couple months ago. Uh, you know, I mean, exactly. it happens. Like, I mean, you know, some people, and it's not like Joey Styles is known to be somewhat over the top in his announcing. Of course he is. It's Joey Styles. Have you heard of him before? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you can't bring in Joey Styles and Expect not expect him not to be Joey Styles. Yeah, exactly. And I said this is, the, and I felt like because again, Joey Styles and ECW was always making those kinds of controversial, topical jokes, right? Mm -hmm. And comments. No, no, this was Chikara, where everything is very PG. Yeah, totally understand. Totally understand. Yeah, totally fine. But this is Evolve. I mean, have you heard the promo the EC3 has cut on Evolve? I mean, it's all right there. So the EC3 and Drew Galloway, like, they cut pretty intense promos on Evolve. Uh, some comments from, because it, we put this story in, in the Facebook group um, uh, for Wrestling Mayhem Show, and, and I thought there was actually, this guy actually got a lot of reaction. Um, uh, first of all, <laughs> well, uh, our, our friend Jim uh, says he actually unfollowed him because he's kind of become an unbearable twenty four seven billboard since WWE fired him. Um, and uh, not stupid and not funny one bit. It's wrestling characters used to say anything to draw heat. Now we have scripted everything. No one is shocked anymore because everything is safe. Uh, it was a topical joke. It. I'm going to use different people. It was also gross and uncalled for. His joke was about sexual assault. Let's be clear on that. It was the way you look tonight. Someone will, will want to assault you. So yeah, there's that too. Uh, again, God, God forbid you say something funny. Says the guy that said that same phrase on this show. Uh, so <laughs> there's that. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think it's, it's a, again, it's, it's the show it was on. He was asked not to say anything political, and that fell into it. Um, so I think it's an unfortunate uh, a turn of events there. Uh, so I don't know. It's, um, and it's topical, unfortunately. You know. Yeah, I mean, if he was asked specifically not to say anything political, then I understand that. But at the same time, you know, if you don't want him to go off book, then write a script for him. I, I, I don't <laughs> think it's quite that simple, but but yeah, no, I, I think I, it I, is. I understand what I you're wish, getting. I wish it was that simple. Yeah, because <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't like it was. It wasn't like it was during commentary where he was trying to vamp. Yeah, it was an in-ring promo. Yeah, you script it. If you don't want him to go off book, if you don't want him to be what made him one of the best commentators in the world, then script him. That's that's why like he stopped working in WWE because they wanted to script him. And again, I think this is, and I'm I'm, I'm again kind of scamming skimming scamming skimming over uh, uh, Quack's uh, 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 one as well. And 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 in addition to this. Uh, effective today, they are instituting a zero policy on misogynistic, racist, and or homophobic speech, written or verbal, whether it's directed toward our cast, our crew, or our patrons. Uh, and, and this is the shape of Chikara. I mean, and again, super family friendly. I think that's great that they do that and they take that stand. You know, I think that's, that's why a lot of people go to Chikara, right? Because they know yeah. there's not going to have all this kind of crap, you know, versus, I mean, you know, wheels, you know, the promotions that we work with here, like, those rules are not in effect, and 
and right, on right. a on a and again and the fans understand it. That's the thing. So. Well, anyway, and I think certain fans want that, right? In, in certain places, yeah. like I mean, you're, we've uh, heard some of the fans mouth, and I'm like, you're sitting there going, yeah. wow, you have to worry about the wrestlers. <laughs> no, no, not worry about the wrestlers the fans, in that one. Yes. I, I, you guys, <laughs> Listen, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. Two weeks ago, I got cussed out by a 15 year old <laughs> the whole night to the fact that our uh, that our produ- our, our uh, TV producer hit me up and was like, hey, I can't use some of this footage. This 15 year old is in meth and you all over the place the whole match. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, like, likely, likely to say certain areas call for it. Other areas you have to understand. If you're told in advance, I mean, uh, let, let, let's be honest. It's like a kid. If you're told in advance, clearly just don't do something. Right. You know, but if, if, if you're not told in advance, I, I think that there should be some type of warning policy before you get rid of someone. But if you're told in advance, after you're told, before something even happens, then you're you're automatically out there. You're whatever whatever happens happens. Right, right. Yeah, certainly. I, anywhere else, this would have been uh, okay enough in context. It, it is context in in that in that right. And everybody's within their rights to say, "Hey, this is not something we're going to do," and that's fine. Right. Uh, Beyond surprises me as one that stepped up in this because haven't they done like aren't they a pretty kind of rough promotion as well. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, so that, that, that seems a little bandwagon to me, but other than that, uh, I can see where they're coming from. So it also might be, maybe they have a working relationship with evolve or something like that. And oh, they certainly. Keep that working relationship. Certainly. I, it, it could be a lot of that too. So, yeah. Uh, it's just a shame because Joey Siles is really good at his job. And he I love one. Him. He makes one offhanded comment that, you know, I'm sure was not directed to be malicious. Like, and that's the thing. It was made to be a joke. And I understand the, the nature of the joke is um, controversial. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it is still a joke, whereas the person who originally said it was not a joke. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and it does it does get into what does that mean and the things that people are so against with this and... and Bigger, yeah. uh, bigger discussions that are more for this show, and maybe you can check out our affiliate that we're on the 405 Media. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so <laughs> they were probably more appropriate for discussions like this. Uh, uh, but anyways, so. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, but uh, uh, I, but I also I I do, and again we're getting kind of in the indie talk here, but I think this is appropriate for this as as fandom and everything goes because they took this opportunity uh, which Kara to actually kind of have a, a little more of a state of wrestling address in this in this letter um so obviously uh, you know they, they said we're, we're not we're not going to tolerate these kinds of this kind of talk um so he go he goes on the patrons of our art form demand more of us it is to them those that empower us to create a larger than life spectacle of professional wrestling that we are beholden not the archaic subculture made up of turn of the last century carny values. Interesting. Uh, the time for us to do away with antiquated and insulting vocabulary like the term mark is right now. The time for us to relinquish any last vestige of power we've given to outmoded r- wrestling rhetoric is right now. Uh, the time for us to draw a line in the sand and say that this is where we stand on a- equality and integration in our art form is right now. So very interesting because this is the kind of thing um and by the way you can get all your car videos at smartmarkvideo.com that's right or if you sign up for that indiegogo <laughs> i have not yet i have not yet redeemed my 30 days of chikaratopia i got for uh, uh my pre-purchase of that video game on indiegogo i interview at awesomecast.net with my quack and bush uh but anyways uh the people <laughs> sorry there's one more bit i want to read here we owe nothing to quote the business the people are and test damn it you use big words quack i'm sorry uh the people our called marks are not handing us their dollars because they fail to understand what is we what it is we truly make. They support us in spite of it. Um, that I think that that's a really really strong statement they 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 have here, um, and really is against um, most podcasters, most wrestling sites, most message boards where they get into that kind of talk. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, I don't. It, it, it feels good in the long run, and I, I thought that was really important and and something I can kind of get behind as as the general message there. So. 
Yeah, but then again, Chikara is completely different from just about every other wrestling promotion out there. Oh, absolutely. Including the main leagues. Yeah, including like Mm -hmm. TNA, WWE, Lucha, New Japan. Like, it's completely different from all of those because it does focus on being family friendly. Hmm. Like, at all times. But but they're also saying we... Like like the say say the terms mark the same say the terms the business you know I I think that also like they're saying I, I, that feels like a top down I mean again this is the top down this is the main guy right saying this is how we're going to do business from now on you know and uh, which I think I and, and Ron, you're you're a wrestler like like you know those terms and how those yeah. are spoken backstage and and uh, behind Mark's backs um, what do you think about like kind of a call out for terms like that. Uh, on, honestly, I, I look at it like this. There, there is a certain, I, w- I want to say a certain way we have to try to keep a believability. Right. But mind you, we can't go back to the sense of when we do a whole ECW Sandman and, and, uh, and, and Raven crucifix type, uh, <laughs> you know, deal where we're like, you know, we're just going to nail this thing home. We can't quite do that anymore. Right, but I, I feel I feel like as a wrestler, as an organization, you have to find that fine line. I forgot who it was that said back when wrestling wasn't so legit, the whole audience believed it. But now, when we're pretty much killing each other, no one wants to believe what's really going on is reality, and that goes on across the whole entire border. You know, that struggles within the locker room and everything toward that extent. So I do feel a grasp of trying to, I guess, make wrestling great again, pun intended. (laughs) There's a part that every industry, every wrestler wants to grab that and then bring it back to what it used to be. So it's 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 honestly a tough line. Well, I mean, the thing is, like the with the advent of social media, we have more access to professional wrestlers than ever before that is very true like very true like you can watch cedric alexander and brian kendrick beat the crap out of each other in the cruiserweight classic or on raw and then you go to youtube and they're joking and laughing while playing madden oh okay so so why are you saying this keep talking and i'm gonna ask you a question if you mean exactly like what i'm about to show you right now (laughs) uh let me Something like up, up, down, down is not a good thing to have. Well, no, I mean, I'm not saying it's not a good thing. I'm just saying it does take away from the legitimacy of what people are trying to accomplish with the storylines. That's why someone like The Undertaker, like Mick Foley once said, I never want to see The Undertaker tweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and and that's that's a great, you know, that's a great way of looking at it. Shouldn't be tweeting. Yeah. Yeah. Dead men don't tweet. Like, yeah. And he, and as far as I know, he, like the only, titles, the only way he's really um, gotten a presence on social media is Michelle McCool will just randomly tweet pictures of him working out, and I'm yeah. like, that's not the Undertaker. That, that's that's Mark Calloway. That, that's do, that's just do, a, do Deadman do this? Let's see if that can uh, level out a little bit. Let me see oh. if I can take. Let me see. If I, I, can yeah, take we, this I, I saw it on this side. We can see it on video. Uh, oh no! Oh, yeah. it's better the other way. <laughs> yeah. What do I got to do? <laughs> there you go. All right. All right that's okay, fine. Do we not see Bray Wyatt right there? Renee Young and Stephanie McMahon. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Very recent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. But you don't see that too often. Uh, I, I, I'm going to continue the, the Sorg uh, Reads Facebook show here a little bit, if you don't mind. Uh, but I think this kind of fits in this. Uh, uh, Joe Dabrowski, friend of the show. Uh, he he has a, a he posted this uh, six hours ago actually, and it popped up and it really kind of resonated with me a little bit too. Uh, friend friend of his that 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 uh, work big time, he's texted uh, a quote to him yesterday and it resonated with him. Just because the fans are coming to watch entertainment doesn't mean we should take our jobs at projecting the characters and building stories any less seriously in ring or online. The more we believe, the easier uh, they can get lost in it with us. And everyone believes at the end of the day. We are all storytellers, and there's a disclaimer. I don't want it to go back to 1970s kayfabe, but still. And the quote, kayfabe, when we broke it, it was uh, not to the fans. They knew for years. We broke it on ourselves. That's what Vince was wrong about. The fans watched because they believed. Then they realized that what they were seeing. Why did they still watch it? Because people 
because uh, the people wrestling still believed. And I think that's a kind of a testament to that social media access, right, Mike? Like, like you're mm-hmm. seeing these people out of context and everything. Um, but, you know, but then there's ones like, okay, Bray Wyatt, a little bit Undertaker. When they are online, maybe they're still projecting a character as an extension of their character or extension of them being some buff badass that's out in the gym or something like that, right? Um Cesaro, you take as a badass as a badass as a badass because he's always wearing suits, he's always drinking his Starbucks, and he's always working out. And then he lifts like giant guys like like uh, uh, Rusev and and, and tosses with no them hesitation. around. Yeah, with no and hesitation. Speaking of Rusev, Rusev completely different on social media. By the way, and then the Rusev, <laughs> Rusev. Listen, I can believe that the Bulgarian brute can just hang out with his beautiful wife. Uh, hello, Lana. Uh, uh, on a vacation that I'm watching the Instagram stories, out, just hanging out, watching his, reading his Harry Potter book. You know, I just completely, I doesn't, I don't think any less of him. I think that like, makes him more I've badass. Been more entertained watching Rusev live tweet his readings of the Harry Potter books than almost anything he's done in the ring in the past year. <laughs> Badasses are people too, okay? <laughs> and I mean, you know, he's a Durmstrang. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. He's 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 the Bulgarian champion from Durmstrang. Yeah, we've had some good episodes in a while, but this might be my favorite conversation we've had in a long, long time. Uh, I, I think I think I think my thing is looking at looking at the current uh, way that wrestling is perceived. Uh, kayfabe, honestly, to me, is not truly dead. I mean, I we 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 can talk on and on about this. It's only, it only goes as long as you you know. As long as long as you push it, I think you you talk about uh, Don Browski. I forgot who uh, who shared. It. I think it was uh, Gregory Iron or, so, or someone like that. That I had a picture of his dog with baloney on his face, and that whole story. If, if, you, if, you, if you've seen it posted over and over again, but people still believe it, and that and that's the thing. If you have a strong enough story and you hold true to that, I mean, I mean, it's it's right there. But I do think the thing is, you know, like you guys were talking about social media and everything. It now gives you a new perception to reality. Before, the reality was, hey, you wouldn't see Hulk Hogan and Macho Man or someone else riding in the same car. That was only your pure reality. Now your reality is, hey, this person is different on social media than they are in person. But when you get in that ring, believe it or not, kayfabe or not, that competition is very real. You are climbing to try to make a career out of what you're doing. That's 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 no kayfabe right there. That's mm-hmm. realistic. So I think the the reality of wrestling is still there. It's the it's the perception and the focus which has completely changed the atmosphere. Which is uh I mean I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm sitting here right now with back pain from taking just uh just a couple kendo shots from uh, Justin Idol. But the fact is, I mean reality is reality, I mean it's all about what you put in front of the fans face. Uh and for an example, the dog with the bologna on his face, which I'm going to probably do at the next uh, end of the show. Sir, I, I have a question before before. Hold we on, I, I, are you getting? Are you getting? Is this giving you flashbacks when I get the kabuki oh, stick out? Oh goodness, no! Is that what's God. up? No, that, that might actually give Labar a flashback from Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, he had a leather jacket. He was fine. <laughs> Sork, I, I have a question. I have a question. What would we think about the women's division in WWE? If Total Divas was an entirely kayfabe show, it isn't. <laughs> Why didn't I tell me? You just destroyed his dreams. Shit. No, no, but seriously, let's Wait. think about that. Like, like imagine if it was actually in sync with Raw. Oh, and oh no, oh, no, oh, no! So I mean, no, I mean, I mean this legitimately. Nice. Like, okay. like you actually have, like Raw is the big show every week. SmackDown, the big show every week. But Total Divas happens after both those shows. Imagine mm-hmm. if they carried over the storylines from Raw and SmackDown onto Total Divas. Imagine how much further we think the WWE would be with women's wrestling if that was the case. Yeah, but unfortunately, they're not the shows where they can do that. So, okay, so I'm going to take away my logistic uh, show formatting of a reality show and, and the production goes into that out of this. Uh, you can still do that, though. Okay. You can still just have them be in character. Yeah. Like, and you can have Natty going home to Tyson saying, 
oh, Daniel that's Bryan's where, being so wait, wait, unfair. Wait, wait. He won't let me be on the team. That's where we have our sitcom, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Natty, Natty walks out of SmackDown, and then and then the sitcom is 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 Natty and and, and Tyson at home with the cat and and. What well, you mean? You mean uh, two paws? Two paws. Yeah, two paws. <laughs> two paws. Two paws. Hashtag two paws. Holy crap! These are all great ideas. WWE, please take these. You have a network. I mean, just you have imagine a network. if Total Divas was a kayfabe show. And man, if you did a show like that, you wouldn't have to worry about Daniel Bryan saying stuff to piss you off. <laughs> Vince. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, this has been a, this has been a fantastic discussion. But we gotta move on. We got a big question, and we got what we learned. And I still got a Kabuki stick. So, uh, as I hold this, I'm going to tell you to visit our sponsor. Go check out Slice on Broadway. Uh, 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 of course, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, of course, at their new home of PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And of course, right here in Broadway Avenue in the Beachview neighborhood, their original location, hence Slice on Broadway. And of course, over in Carnegie, PA on Main Street. Uh, the awesome stuff. They've been supporting the show. They've been feeding us pizza. It's all gone because everybody was in studio for Awesome Cast already. Uh, but uh, we'll get more people in here for Mayhem Show soon. I might have to get two um, um, pizzas from them in the future. <laughs> we might have to up the sponsorship. Uh, but anyways, uh, but thank you so much to them. Check them out. PTH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Uh, slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. If you visit them, I, I scolded not scolded, but I, 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 because uh, our friend Uncle Crappy, uh, over at the Post Gazette, Beer Me, go check out Beer Me over at the Post Gazette's website. Uh, is uh, visits there all the time, and I was like, "Have you high fived them and said the awesome cast sent you?" And he had not, and he will be doing that next time. So, so this is a this is a fight between Mayhem Show uh, fans and Awesome Cast fans. Now, I want to find out next time I go in there to Slice on Broadway what they've been hearing from more. Uh, are, uh, so if you get in there, if you're a Mayhem Show fan, give them a high five and say the Mayhem Show sent you. Don't hit them in the face or anything like that. They might be very tired from making awesome pizzas all day. But other than that, don't hurt anybody. Just just, just at least say the words, okay? And if they look coordinated, give them a high five because it gets sweaty in the kitchen, okay? And just want to look out for our pizza-making friends. Uh, so check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com. And uh, we'll be back with the big question after this let's talk tech tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in pittsburgh online gadgets startups and more check it out at awesomecast.net we are back wrestling mayhem show we got our hardware in hand uh sorgatron here with the kabuki stick we got wheels of of the rwa mad mike of poughkeepsie new york the U.S. champion, apparently, and of course, the Rev. Oh He's- yeah, my brother, testify to that. <laughs> it is time for the big question, and well, so we came up with one, and we took we drew straws, and we picked what we were going to do. So we're going to pick what if other promotions, since we do have like a promotion warfare between Raw and SmackDown, as much as you want to call it that. Uh, but what if other promotions were involved in this, in the Survivor Series, and had to submit their teams uh, for the Survivor Series? And we're going to go around, and we're going to pick our teams for these promotions and their Survivor Series. Um, I think, uh, Mad Mike, let, this is your idea. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. do you have your five in 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 in, uh, in line? And uh, do you uh, can you tell us what your promotion is that we selected for you? Uh, well, I don't have my five in mind right now, so I'm going to do it off the top of my head. Oh, but Sorg, Sorg, um, my promotion is Lucha Underground, and oh man, trying to trying to pick five people from Lucha Underground is a is a daunting task because, like, do do I go with entertainment value? Do I go with pure strength? Do I go with a combination? Um, I'm going to answer with you. I want you're going to go with survivors. Ooh. I mean, uh, oh can I, can shit, I, can Sorg! I, can I, can All I right, kick you in the face if you don't pick uh, Prince Puma. Mm, we'll see. And secondarily, um, if you don't pick Pentagon Junior. Slash Dark. Oh, fuck! <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to pick both those guys. Um, I'm gonna start off. No more at this. Uh, with Katrina. With Katrina. 
Because so Katrina's ringside, you know, she's got the stone of power, so it's fine. Um, I'm also going to go the man they call Cage. I'm going to go Taya. I'm going to go mm, Pentagon Dark. One more choice. Choose wisely. I No, I don't know <laughs> if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it for the simple reason that I want someone who can fire this team up at the same time as completely unpredictable. Marty the Moth Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Though that I, I think, mm. I, I think that's my five. Yeah. Okay. Is that your final answer? Is your I, finger off the chess piece? Uh, <laughs> damn. Yes. Yes. I, I'm buzzing in. Buzzing in. That's my final answer. That, that's that's my final team. All right. I, I All feel. Right. I feel like that. That's a good team. I feel like that beats SmackDown team. Honestly. All right. I want to go next. I, I I drew Ring of Honor. Um, and again, this is hard because I need to try to not pick people that might be in NXT already. Um, so, of course, Dalton Castle gets the pick. Uh, can we call Cole, Cole Cabana an official uh, ROH guy now? I, I mean, I know he's not. Oh, he's been he's done some TV actually. So I'm going to go. Had, with yeah, I mean, I think, I think he's, he's, had ROH, he's had an ROH title match. Oh, has he? Oh, wow. So yeah. I, 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 it's all it's all about website official. Okay, okay. He's got the promo picture. Um, <laughs> that was a great. That was a great Colt. Cabana that's my impression. impression. Love you, Colt. Love you. Miss you every day. <laughs> um, but uh, um, okay. What I say? I'll say we got Colt. We got Dalton. We got um, I don't know his name, but freaky Papa Shango guy. I saw at the last show. First <laughs> Larusso <laughs> keeps telling me the name of it, and I keep forgetting. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, the guy. Okay. That, what what's that? Oh, oh, okay, I haven't the guy, watched Ring of Honor in a while. The guy so I that have makes no uh, the, the guy that keeps uh, making Steve Perino do weird stuff. Uh, I want to put him in because he's badass, um, and I should learn his name by now. I should probably watch the program a little bit more. Um, but yeah, anyways, I was about to say Prince Nana, <laughs> not Prince Nana. Also, also a cool guy, but I wouldn't put him on the Survivor Series team. <laughs> so uh, Necro Butcher isn't around anymore. Um, let's see. Oh, jeez. Um, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Friend, I'm just gonna be like super friend of the show on this one. I'm gonna go Ray Rowe and Warbeard. Mm-hmm. And what do I got? One more left. So I will yep. pick. Oh, just because I want badasses, I'm gonna go with Shane Taylor. Oh, Ooh. sword! I, I was waiting for you to say it. I'm shocked you didn't go Jay Briscoe. No, die. No. Sorry, is that your final answer? I've, listen, I've watched Ray Rowe and Shane Taylor destroy people for years. I'm going with Ray Rowe and Shane Taylor. That's, that's, just, that's just happening. I'm sorry. So, yeah. No, that's my fan answer. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And I believe, Wheels, you drew NXT. Yes, I did. I drew NXT. And I have my team. I sat there and I thought of it while you guys talked. And I went... <laughs> Are you ready for this? I, I think the my first team, two are obvious. My team captain, Samoa Joe. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. All right. And my second man is Glorious. Oh, oh nice. Okay. I like it. I like it. And, and I got to get some strong style in there with some Shinsuke Nakamura. Yes. Now here's where it gets tricky. <laughs> I'm going to go <laughs> This can go one of five ways. Go, are, you, are you ready? I'm going to go a little Patrick Clark. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to go um, a little to Chompa. Ooh, I like it. I like it. And double A or A double, as you would like to be known as okay. Austin Aries. Okay. There's my NXT Survivor Series team. I like it. There you go. There you go. And finally, we thought we'd do something a little different. So, the Rev, you're going to uh, give your team, which is? All of the Pittsburgh indie wrestling scene. There you go. <laughs> Very big option. But I know my number one pick will be, and LeBar will be happy of this, Wardlow. Ooh. I understand he's the man with war in his name. I believe so. You know that's a dangerous man. 
Then my second pick, coming straight from the PWX Academy, David Lawless. Ooh. Okay. Gary Mann, a mixture of a powerhouse and extreme athletic abilities, which means an incredibly high leg drop that makes Hulk Hogan look like an amateur. Much respect to Hulk Hogan. Uh, let me see. Then on third, I, 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 I would hate to say this. I, I'll, I'll give it to my man, Chris Taylor. Ooh. I'll give it to my man, Chris Taylor. Uh, let me see what I got. Two, two more picks. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Two we more got, picks. We got, we I got, have to say. We, we have, we have a problem with, with one of your picks. Hulk Hogan oh has something goodness. to say. What you talking about, brother? My yeah. leg drop Be Andre the Giant, brother. I don't know why Hulk Hogan's wearing a fuzzy hat right now, but it's happening. Because it's winter, Sork. It's you know cold out, brother. It, 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 kind of, it kind of looks like he just came from an LL Cool J concert. Sork, I bought this I bought this hat with my Gawker money, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sure, Last, two <laughs> Last two picks. <laughs> I can't even say it now. Goodness. Last two picks. This is for the gold. This is for the gold. I have two guys that are known to be big. Both a big league and a big time. I'm going to go with big time. Bill. We already know. Bill. Culture. Yes. I got to say it like Brock, like like, uh, Paul Heyman. Then I have John. McChesney. Nice. Good picks. I like it. There's my picks. Good picks. Awesome. That's and, fabulous. And, and Sorg, the, the, the preamble to this, did we record that for gold? Yeah, we promoted the gold. So okay, if you want to know. If you want to know Mad Mike's special TNA team, I'm not going to reveal it here. Sign up for Patreon. You can listen to Mad Mike's TNA Survivor Series team. And oh boy. Is it awesome? Oh yes, it yeah. is. Holy hell! Uh, oh, dig it! I, I I know I know we we um I, I know I said we weren't going to do another segment kind of in between here, but but kind of from this like I, it is a Survivor Series. It is like the thirty years Survivor Series, uh, and I know I've been reminiscing a little bit, but not in the way I'd like to because I was watching the spotlights that they have on. <laughs> Which um, I'm like three or four matches in. Uh, most of them have Bret Hart, and I've had no Survivor Series teams, so I'm a little sad about that. But still, <laughs> because I've always, even though they really kind of really try to get me out of it, Survivor Series is the Survivor Series. You know what I mean? Like those first like three or four years where those those two weird teams. But there are a lot of tremendous matches. Like I don't think I ever watch uh, Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart title, not title for title, but still like Intercontinental title versus heavyweight title. Uh, uh, champions. Um, oh yeah, that was a good match. The the Bret Hart Stone Cold match was incredible. Wow! And of course, Sword, Sword still one of the best pay per views I've ever been to. Survivor Series two thousand two. And, and which the, one was that? The Elimination Chamber, the very first one, right? Yeah, I. Ooh. Yeah, the elim- that had. All right, let me let me run down this card. And this is all just based off of memory. Hmm. That had the Elimination Chamber where Shawn Michaels won his last world title. That had Big Show versus Brock Lesnar back when they were, could both still matter. That had <laughs> no, it had the Guerrero uh, Los Guerreros versus Edge and Rey Mysterio versus Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit triple threat match. Uh, it had the Dudleys and Jeff Hardy versus Three Minute Warning and Rico in an elimination tables match. Jeez, yeah, it had so. Trish. It had Trish Stratus versus Victoria in a hardcore match for the women's championship. Hashtag women's wrestling. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, and it had the debut of Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. And he beat up Matt Hardy and Chris Nowitzki. Who, Big Booty Daddy. <laughs> he didn't do any math, too, which was great. What, what, uh, was, that a, <laughs> was that a non-match? Oh yeah, no, it was a non-match. Okay. It was it was like Scott Siren was gonna make his decision, and then he didn't make a decision, and he just beat everybody up. <laughs> As Scott will do. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, and that's just from memory. Like I know, I think there might have been one other match on there, but it was such a good, good show. And I don't even think 
there was a single Survivor Series match on that card. There wasn't. No, it was it was really just kind of headlined by the Elimination Chamber, and, and there wasn't a lot of Survivor Series matches. I think in the two thousands in general, this just kind of became like they would have things like that. They had the Deadly Game where The Rock, I think, won his first title, his first uh, uh, WWE title, um, the World Title, of course. Uh, so I mean, I mean, Deadly Game, I was down with. Oh, and it had. Uh... Nope. Noble. That was that was the other match I forgot. Yeah, the, uh, Jamie Noble and, and uh, sorry, you cut out there for a moment. Billy Kidman and Jamie Noble. Yeah, with Nidia. Um, <laughs> Nidia. <laughs> so uh, I wonder if the Godly Good will make a return. Oh uh, no, I hope not. No, no, yeah. I'm no. You know what we need and WWE. You have some time. This idea is free. It will be over. You want the Godly Gooker back, and you know who you put in that fucking outfit. Hide and Reich. No. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> what? No. No. Um, no. Interesting we guess. Trying to avoid Hide and Reich. But you know who put you know who you put in that? Hornswoggle. Nope. <laughs> I I will get this out. The mascot. Team SmackDown. Oh, James oh, Ellsworth. No. Because I and I'll tell you why. You put him in that gobbledygooker outfit, he will finally have a fucking chin. <laughs> I Well, I'm going to oh end my it. Goodness. I can't. We can't. I have to end the show on that note now. Uh, <laughs> you just, this is so good. Wow. <laughs> Hashtag gobbledy Ellsworth. Survivor Series. Happy 30th anniversary. I need to watch. I want to go back and watch. He even it. needs to come out of the egg like a goddamn Hatchimal, Sorg. <laughs> you and Hatchimals, man. You don't know what Hatchimal is? You don't have kids. No. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. We actually just did a news story on that, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a big deal. I, I bet yeah. you got some quotes from me on there. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, the, 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 well, I don't know. Uh, uh, Rev, uh, Wheels, do you have anything else you want to say about the 30th anniversary of Survivor Series? My my thing, my thing is, real quick, I said it on Twitter. I was looking for Raw and SmackDown to do some really big things. I think they set it up nicely on both ends. I don't think that either end right now, just for this uh, previous week, was overshadowed. I'm looking for some big things to happen. Still up in the air and questionable about what's going to happen with Undertaker. Something has to happen at Survivor Series regarding the Undertaker. We just don't know exactly what yet. But um, but honestly, I'm definitely looking for uh, hopefully the Survivor Series to uh, live up to its expectations. Do you think uh, whatever happens with Undertaker pretty much sets up something for Rumble? I, I automatically think it's going to set up for Rumble and then it's going to continue on for uh, WrestleMania. I'm really looking forward to uh, – it, it's, it's hard to say because – Brock and Goldberg, they're doing the whole thing on Raw, but Undertaker came back on SmackDown. Uh, it's hard to say if he's just going to stay on SmackDown or he just decided to come back right on SmackDown only since it was their 900th episode. Uh, but honestly, I'm, uh, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to say right now. I do know that it will set up. It will set up for something at Royal Rumble. Somebody asked uh, in, the, in the chat, uh, you know, do you really think um, Undertaker is going to be back full time? And I responded, once a month at best. You're gonna you're gonna be looking at uh, live in ring action. I would say you're right about once a month at the best. Right. But he's still gonna do an appearance one of those other uh, one of those other weeks of all. Uh, look to see him at least twice a month. Um, but you know they're not okay. gonna try to overplay it to to still keep that hype alive. I think that I think that that sounds good. Uh, and plus, you get the tease. Hey, next week T- Undertaker's doing this. You know, he's not here for two yeah. weeks, and then that, that way he doesn't have like. A crazy weekly road schedule or anything like that, because I mean he's older and he's, he's, he needs to, t- to take it easy. You need to you take know it easy. The world is going to end when James Ellsworth is getting more TV time than Undertaker. I'm just saying. Well, well, well. And live shows, my man. Wow. Live shows. He was over in the UK for live shows and victories over uh, over AJ Styles <laughs> and more victories than John Cena. Guys, it is time to learn what you learned from pro wrestling this week. Who would like to go first? Wheels. <laughs> Good pick, oh, Wheels. Thanks, Rev. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> show. You, had a, you, you definitely learned something on, on, on Saturday night at least, right? Oh, yeah. I, 
I always learn something at one of our shows, and I've learned that Fragili is not just Italian. It's Fragili. also Chris Taylor. No, it's Italian for Chris Taylor, I think. That's what I meant. I you know what I meant. You messed See, up the joke. You learned it well. You messed up the joke, Wheels. I didn't mess. That's not a joke. He crippled Taylor. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Sorry, Chris. I love you. <laughs> it's okay. He's gone. Yeah, you have to super kick him. <laughs> he doesn't love you. He doesn't um, love you. No, no Wheels. One loves you. Wheels, it's it's a mandate when you are on a wrestling show. If you say I'm sorry, I love you, you have to super kick someone. I'll let Rev do that then. Okay. You know what? That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Mm-hmm. So Rev, when you see Chris Taylor, just send him a message from me that I'm sorry, I love you. And then it'll, it'll be an honor. I will shoot you the videos via www.pwxtv.com. I will shoot. Thank it. you. <laughs> There you go. Uh, Mad Mike, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that the cruiserweight division is apparently a package deal. <laughs> Do you think when they... When like, they it, like, you think... I mean, maybe someone like Cedric Alexander is like, hey, um, could I stay on Raw and maybe go after another title? <laughs> do, 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 you, do you feel like do you, I mean you know do you worry like me that when the cruiserweight experiment's over they're just going to be uh, shoved in a crate that says uh, return to full sale no it won't even go oh, that far boy. no sorry they'll be shoved in individual crates sending back to, their, to the indie feds they came from <laughs> oh, you so, know side note while we're on this I, I asked someone on social media I said I'm not looking for – I mean, James Ellsworth is, is doing great for what they're using him to do. But I said, what happens when they're done? And someone said, oh, I think they're building him to join the cruiserweight division. Oh, wow. no, you're right. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> and he's going to win the – he's going to win the title. He's going to – oh, that's exactly right. You can't You can't have him beat the world champ twice. Uh, and not and not have him go to the cruiserweight to win the title. Oh God, he's gonna win the cruiserweight title in that first episode of three hundred five live, isn't he? Or two hundred five live? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh fuck me! Oh. So if you ask me, what I learned in professional wrestling this week is that every man to. with two hands has a fighting chance, <laughs> and James Ellsworth is going to the top. Much love, but the fact is this: overall in professional wrestling. Don't chew much more than you can handle. I almost learned that going against Chris Taylor and Justin Idol, but unfortunately, they will know that as the tables turn this Saturday at Pro Wrestling Express 22nd anniversary featuring Mark Madden and WWE legend, Hall of Famer, Tully Blanchard. Thank you. you. There, there you go. I, lo- I love That's how. My I love that was that was expertly done, good sir. Go check him out. <laughs> PWXTV.com. Uh, there's gonna be a shirt that says "The Champ with No Chin." <laughs> oh <laughs> man! You know you might as well make it now, man. Hashtag Champ with No Chin. <laughs> hashtag, chin. hashtag not, my, not chin, my chinless champ. Hashtag not my chinless champ. <laughs> Oh. My, chin, my chinless champ is Ralphus. Oh, geez, How have we done all this Goldberg stuff and not gotten Chris Jericho mentioning Ralphus once? Oh man, I mean, everything's real separated. You know, like it's it's like it's like nobody else on. It's like Raw. a video game storyline, Sorg. Yeah, yeah. It, it's <laughs> like nobody else on Raw is aware that Goldberg and 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 Lesnar are happening, right? Except for those. No one else on Raw cares. Yeah, They're like we got our own. We got our own. <laughs> I learned that my my new dream match is going to be uh, WWE Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles. Um, wonderfully Ooh, done. That's I, gonna be fun. I loved I loved the crossover promos they did there. Um, the uh, paper the your, your title means nothing over here. Yeah, on the Owens show. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I thought that was good. I, I thought that was a really good because I mean they do need to um, do a little bit of like why does this belt matter. Versus the world title, which is the world title, you know, that has been around since Bruno and the like, right? Uh, do, you, so. do, you th- do you think eventually, real quick, that that can go eventually into a title versus title match? Uh, to where you're the world and the universe. Not, I could see a champion versus champion, 
but not a title versus title. No, no, I don't think I don't. They're not going to do that until they're bored with the. Uh, like, you know, we're, I, this is all. It's all happened before, and it's all going to happen again. The, Sorg, the, the I can draft, see that happening at the, the Rumble. The draft and the brand split. Spoiler alert: is just like Battlestar Galactica. It's going to come. It, it goes away until it destroys itself and it has to come back, and and it's just a cycle at this point. And it's going to stick around about two years longer than it should have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm guessing like I don't want a Palestine. really bitchy Cylon. Uh, so uh, that's Stephanie, right? Stephanie's the Cylon. Got it, Mike. Uh, but anyways, guys, no comment. This has been a lot of fun, and I think we only got into a little bit of trouble tonight. So uh, I think that's a uh, 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 top marks for all. Good job. Give yourself a hand. Give yourself a mayhem hand right there. There you go. Good job. Good job, guys. Thank you so much, yeah. the Rev. Joining us this week. It was an honor, my man. Thank you, guys. Let, let us know what you think of the Rev on the show. Should the Rev come back? You let us know when you thought somebody shouldn't come back in the recent weeks. So I want to hear some positivity this week. Uh, so let us know. <laughs> the Rev, where can they find you online? You can find me on Facebook, The Rev Ron Hunt. On Instagram, Rev underscore Ron Hunt. And on Twitter, just look up The Rev Ron Hunt or at Ron L. Hunt 7. You'll be able to find me up there. And um, you can also find me at Pro Wrestling Express right in the Keysport, especially this Saturday for the 22nd anniversary show with Michael Gray from the Misfits, Mark Madden, the super genius, and WWE legend, Tully Blanchard. I missed it. Did you mention Chair Shot Reality? And Chair Shot Reality. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. Chair Shot Reality. Follow us at CS Reality. We will be on the air. Follow us at WrestleZone.com. You can find us Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Here with the whole crew, Josh Eisenberg, Justin Labar, Andrew Springsteen. You'll find the whole crew right there. There you go. Mad Mike is at Mad Mike 4883. Poughkeepsie, New York. Hold it down. Absolutely. And uh, while I probably will not be on the midweek board this week, we have Aztec Warfare. Aztec Warfare this week. So stay tuned for my live tweet tomorrow night whenever the hell I get out of work. Because holy hell, Aztec Warfare, y'all. And there's probably going to be a bunny, and I'm going to be scared. <laughs> How is that storyline going on here? Are you still like it really It hasn't even out? started yet, Sorg. <laughs> I need to make more checkers. Sorg, I am frightened, and it hasn't even started yet. I need more. Oh, I need to make more photoshops of the checker man sneaking up on you. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> <laughs> that was some good stuff. I had so much fun that night. I haven't that much fun in Photoshop since like like school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good, so good. And wheels, so hot just, wheels. Just take all my Comic Con pictures and just put them behind oh, me. And it'll be oh, like a where- okay. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be like, where is the Checker Man? Let's find the Checker Man. <laughs> so um, where's Waldo? Lucha is so yeah. creepy. You should Photoshop him on the Lucha Underground panel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I should. Yes, I should. Hot Wheels RWA on the Twitter. He is the sound guy over at Renegade Wrestling Alliance. He helps with the social media and such over there. RWALive.com. Yes. You can find me there. You can find me on Facebook if you want to. But I might not accept you. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. No, <laughs> just kidding. I would accept you guys. I'm kidding. Hey, everything's updated and wonderfully flying beautifully on RWALive.com. Why? Well, because I'm a busy man and I keep myself busy. I don't know what that I'm turned into. Wheels rolling. <laughs> <laughs> and also, check out I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com for all the shows that we do here of uh, pro wrestling and otherwise, and of course, Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com and all of the links and stuff are over there where you communicate with us and subscribe or patreon or whatever you would like to do uh coming up this week if you are in the pittsburgh area friday you're doing nothing at 6 p.m over at work hard pittsburgh in the allentown neighborhood up in warrington avenue we're having a studio wrestling mixer if you have memories of studio wrestling here in pittsburgh or if you want to to just meet some people that do have memories of, of as a wrestling fan and say, what was it like to be in the fan in the, in the uh, 60s, 70s, 80s? Uh, stuff we're looking at. We are going to reveal some footage that we have been working on for a studio wrestling documentary uh, to, to the people in attendance at that mixer on Friday. Uh, you can find information uh, for that on the events page over at the Sorgatron Media Facebook page. 
I am, of course, I have been sharing on the Wrestling Mayhem Show stuff as well. So please come out uh, and join us. And, and uh, it's free. We're going to have uh, uh, cupcakes from uh, Bite Me Bakery and uh, and uh, some coffee from down the road and, and uh, just, just a good hangout time. Uh, so go check that out. Sorgatron Media Coffee. You want to come meet some Mayhemers this Sunday. Also at Work Hard Pittsburgh in Allentown, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that is also that group. That that event is also on Wrestling Mayhem Show's Facebook page. Uh, that's all I can think of going on with pro wrestling. Go check out PWX. Go support indie wrestling. Go support other wrestling. Just go be a good wrestling fan, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.